Hey everyone, and welcome to another Hard to Earn 4 mining lesson on the Iron Workshop. In this lesson, we'll talk about modding AI behavior. Let's get to it. Alright, now before we begin, a couple of words. Now, first of all, let me apologize for how long it took me to actually post this lesson, but it did require a lot of testing. And unfortunately, this lesson is going to be smaller than I originally wanted it to be. But that is because a lot of my testing has proved very inconclusive. So there is a lot of stuff that's up in the air that I'm not really certain about how it works and how it may work for you when you are implementing it in your mods. And this is something that I really want to avoid on this channel. I don't want to give you misinformation and maybe to give you the appearance that something is a fact when in fact I myself am not totally confident about it. So this lesson is going to be much smaller uh, in its scope and it's also going to be very different. We will not be creating any mod. We will not be actually modifying any files during this lesson. It will only serve as pointers for you to consider how you want to approach your own AI modding. All right, so the first thing that we're going to be talking about is modding the focus tree AI. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about modding focus tree AI. For those of you who have created focus trees, you might be familiar with the way that you put AI logic into these focus trees by adding modifiers and factors. And this is the way that you would usually go about implementing certain behavior and how you want the AI to do your focuses, right? Let's take a look at an example of the Mexican focus tree. So in here we have a focus tree for Mexico. Let me just find the AI portion in here. Right, so we have this focus. And right now it says that the AI should do this focus with a factor of 100. And there is an additional modifier that increases this factor by 10 points if the government is communist. Now for you, if you are implementing historical focuses for your nations, it totally makes sense that you used this way to do your historical focuses and you might give some focuses higher priority and non-historical focuses lower priority. But there is actually a much better way to do this. So if you want to implement historical and non-historical focus, it is much better to use the AI strategy files than to implement it into the focus tree itself. Which means that if there are historical focuses or focuses that your nation has to do or must do, then it's better to put them in the AI strategy files and not to put this AI logic in here. In here, you would put certain things that might make a certain focus uh, more probable or less probable. But if that is a focus that you still need your country to do 100% of the time, you should definitely put it in the AI strategy files. And I have a file like that open in here for Mexico. You can find it in common, AI strategy plans, and here we have mexico.txt. So let's see what we have in this file. So these files contain a lot of stuff, but we're just going to be talking about the focuses portion. Now this is something that I'm going to say quite a bit throughout this video, because uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, there are a lot of things about AI files which are not clear to me. And I've spent a lot of time testing and trying different variations, but results are so inconclusive that I prefer not to talk about things that I'm not confident about how they're going to work. All right, so in here we have a couple of things that you should definitely pay attention to when creating your own AI strategy plans. First of all, make sure to change the ID of this strategy plan. So for example, here it's called Mexico historical. And if you were to copy and paste this file to use as a template, it is quite natural for you to leave this here and then wondering why the nation that you are using this file for is not actually doing what it's been told to do. So it's quite important to change this in here. Next we have allowed. So in here you can, uh, for example, put the country tag, which is supposed to use this AI strategy plan. Next, we have enable. So when is this strategy going to be enabled? For example, if you want these to be historical focuses, 
then it would definitely make sense if you were to put is historical focus on yes. You have also the option to put certain game rules if you have certain game rules created that might boost certain historical options or reduce them you can definitely put that in here and this is how it works for the vanilla game as well uh, when you choose a type of historical behavior for an AI nation uh, the game actually refers to these files in AI strategy plans next we have uh, an option that tells us when we should abort uh, using all of the stuff in this file but now let's get to the important stuff, which is the AI national focuses. So the AI will execute these focuses one by one. And as I said, one of the best things to use this for is for historical focuses or focuses that are essential for a country to do. And you don't want them to be affected by certain game conditions or certain things that might affect uh, that country. Alright, so in here you should definitely put these focuses. As far as I can see here, there's also something called ideas. I'm not really sure what it does. I'm not sure why it's here. Uh, so for example, we have an idea here and it has the level 10. I, I seriously do not know what this means. If you do know what it means, please let me know in the comments. Alright, so this is the tip that I have for you when you are including AI logic in your focuses. It's much better to do it here than in the focus files themselves because it keeps them much cleaner without access information. But if you are creating non-historical focuses or focuses that should depend on certain situations that are very dynamic, then you should definitely put it in the focus files. All right, so with that said, let's move on to number two, modding diplomatic AI. Okay, so let's talk about modding diplomatic AI. Now, the title is a bit confusing because the files that we're going to be looking at are also responsible for some military aspects as well. But in general, they include more diplomatic AI than other things. So if you wondered uh, how is it that France doesn't really invade uh, Germany when uh, the when the war starts then that is something that has been defined for france in the ai then that is something that has been defined for france in the ai strategy files so let's go ahead and look in what so let's go ahead and look at one of these files i've opened the file for france obviously uh, a lot of nations have their own unique files. And what do we have in here? First of all, these files are located in common AI strategy, followed by the tag of the country, but you can also rename them after wars. So for example, if you want your AI behavior to be uh, one way in one war and maybe behave differently in another war, then you can definitely create dif different files in, in order to keep things more orderly and know where to look for the specific behaviors. So one of the first things that we see here is that we have a list of the different AI strategies that we can implement in these files. I do have to say these aren't all of them. And if you're looking for something particular, you can either go through all of the files in AI strategy, or you can use the link that I will have in the description of this video that will take you to the Heartfire 4 wiki where you will have a full list of the AI strategies that you can implement. Now, it is very important for me to say that a lot of these don't really seem to be working the way they are described. As I said, I have been running a lot of tests and some of these just outright don't seem to be working or working in a way uh, that's very weird, strange and is not at all what you would expect it to do. So this will require a lot of experimenting on your behalf in order to see what works for you and what may work in certain conditions and not work in others. So for example, here we have FRA unit production. So like in our previous AI strategy plans, we also have to designate the allowed, the enabled, the abort, and this is the AI strategy itself. Now you can use a couple of these AI strategies for one category, that is totally fine. 
and that is completely up to you how you arrange and reorder these things. So for example, we see here that this AI strategy is intended for France or any country whose original tag is France. So for example, if there was a dynamic country that was created out of a rebellion from France, it would also apply to them. And first of all, we have the AI strategy role ratio garrison. So what is the ratio of garrison units should be for France? Now, this is actually quite a high value. And if you were to play around with this, you will see that the AI changes the way it produces units. But you should also note that there are other files who actually specify the ratio of units. So just making a change here will not always have an immediate effect on the country. And as we continue to go through this file, you will see that other types of units also have their own ratios. So this is for example used to tell Germany that it should focus on armored and mechanized divisions. This is where the AI gets that behavior from. All right, let's move on a bit uh, forward and we see that we have other things in here. For example, we have something called area priority. So what area the country should prioritize? And there are files called area priorities where you can create new ones. So for example, here we see that France is prioritizing Europe very, very highly. For example, it does not prioritize almost at all North America. And as you play with these values, you will see that the AI starts shifting the various divisions across the map. Now, unfortunately, this is not something that's very consistent. And as I was testing it, it seemed to work sometimes, sometimes it did not work. Again, it seems to depend a lot of conditions in the game itself. And of course, if you're creating a mod or for example, if your mod is in a completely different time frame, then things might uh, work even differently. So you should take that into account. Another type of AI strategy, which was personally very important for me, was the AI strategy for sending volunteers. And this is again where it is defined. So for example, if we look here in this Germany file, you see that it has the send volunteers desire to South Africa 200. And this is actually how you can tell the AI if it should send volunteers to other countries fighting wars. From my testing, I can tell you that any value above 200 should do the job. But if you really want to crank it, you can go up to 1000 and then the country will definitely send volunteers of course with in-game limitations, so you need to have the world tension high enough, you need the country to have enough divisions and so on and so forth. But if all the conditions are met and the AI strategy is in place, then you can be sure that volunteers will be sent. Another type of AI strategy that I want to talk about is the ignore claim. This is for, this is for example meant, this is for example used for Germany this is for example is used to stop Germany from this is for example this one for this one for example is used for Germany to prevent it from starting to justify wars against Poland and you see that this one is enabled when Poland exists when it doesn't have a war and when Germany has completed the Jur demand memo focus and you see that it is aborted if the date is higher than 1940 or if Poland does not exist, then this uh, strategy uh, will be aborted, which means the AI will no longer use it, which makes sense because if Poland doesn't exist, then there is no uh, point to ignore claims towards a country that doesn't exist anymore. Now, there are a lot more AI strategies that you can use. And it will not, it's not really possible for me to go over all of them in this video, but hopefully this has given you a pointer in where to look in order to modify the behavior of your diplomatic AI. Now let's move on to number three, modding ideology AI. Lastly, let's take a look at modding ideology AI. So the main responsibility of these files is what should the AI do after a war is over depending on its ideology. And let's take a look at these files and see what we have there. 
First of all, I'm going to open the file zero underscore civil war and you can find it in common AI piece civil war. Now this file tells the game that any country which is in a civil war should always annex the other country. There is no room for interpretation of any other thing. For example, you can see here that with the liberate or puppet or puppet all or puppet state, take states, all of these other things that could be the outcome of a war, they all have a factor of zero, which means that the AI should not do it and it should always go for the annex option. This is how the game makes sure that countries who are in civil war will always consume one another and that will not leave any uh, dynamic tags on the map when these wars are concluded. But of course you can change this and if you want your countries to actually puppet another country which it has a civil war with, you can definitely add modifiers in here and of course you can also add a modifier that will be dependent on a country tag. So if you want to leave the original behavior for all other countries and just have it for one tag, you could just put a tag in here by adding a modifier. Now let's take a look at the one underscore communism file. And this file is, as you can see, much more complex because for the communist ideology, it is much more nuanced when it should annex, when it should puppet and do all of these other things. I won't obviously go through any of these files line by line because there's a lot of stuff in here, but you're welcome to explore these files and change them. Obviously, if you want, for example, your communist countries or your new ideology countries to always annex other countries, you can change the factor here to something like, I don't know, 10,000, right? To make sure that it always over overrides all other uh, ideologies. And of course, if you're creating a new ideology, you can just take this file, copy the file, and then just change the ideology ID or ideology uh, tag that we have in here, in this case, communism. So that is how you can actually change what the AI does uh, after a war is concluded. There are other ways to do this as well, but uh, this is outside of the scope of this video. So we are basically done. This is all the stuff that I can, uh, let's say, safely talk about, right? So it took me quite a, a long time to get this video out because I was doing a lot of testing. I actually wanted it to be more complex, more in depth, have a lot, have a lot more things in here, but a lot of my tests uh, returned very inconclusively and that is when I had to settle and decide that I will not be talking about things which I am not confident about and that I can't tell you explicitly that this will work like this when you do something. I hope that most of you watching have something to take away from this video and that it will improve your modding experience and the mods that you create. If you have any comments, if you know something about these files that I did not mention, or maybe if you experimented and you actually came back with some conclusions, please do share them in the comments. It will help everybody who is watching this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.